Hey, pumpkin. <laughs> Just kidding. I promise I won't. But sometimes jokes turn into an actual tradition. Hello and welcome back to another week with me, you guys. I hope you like by the title and the intro. We're going full hog dark cottage core. And I'm so glad that I finally figured out the name for what I am. I've been wondering for so long, what am I? I am so dark cottage core to a T. I love ruffles, I love puffy sleeves, and I love lace, and I love trim. You guys know all this, I don't need to tell you. <laughs> you you're like, uh-huh, duh, anyway, the point. But it has to have an edge. It can't just be this frilly, frill, frill, girly stuff without a little bit of an edge to it. I was saying on my blog post about all of this that it's like a wilting rose at the end of summer and it's this like lovely, beautiful smell. It's still fragrant, but it's slowly kind of falling off of the stem because it's wilting because it's the end of summer and there's thorns on it and you prick it and there's like that bloody red color dripping down it. That is my style, a rose and its thorn. It's just that juxtaposition of really beautiful soft things with something a little bit more edgy. I was so excited to discover that because I've wondered for so long. I even for a while thought, am I dark academia? Like dark academia, if you go on Pinterest, is wools, sweaters, argyle, corduroy, dark colors. And then, you know, you wear glasses and you have your briefcase. It's very much a style that I get and I get into and I buy a lot of the pieces thrifting for that, that would fit into that style. Like I can put together an outfit that looks dark academia based off of what I have in my closet, but it's not me. It has to have something else to it to give it a little frill. Sprinkle of girly and a sprinkle of edge. <laughs> go read that blog post if you want to know more about it. I also go into a whole thing about whimsy goth, which is another kind of subgenre of all of this stuff. It's very simple. Similar whimsy goth is basically in short uh, zodiacy stuff. So you've got crescent moons on it. You've got ravens in the patterns. I mean, it's just that whole really witchy, darker kind of style. So what we're gonna do this week is we're gonna go look for something uh, that we can upcycle that's regular cottage core and turn it into co dark cottage core. Turn it into something that is of my taste but has that edge to it that I like. You know? You know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying this is who I am all the time. I know that when spring rolls around, I throw on my bright colors again. But for the most part, 9 out of 10, dark cottage core is a better explanation of my year-round taste and what I gravitate towards. I love myself some dark florals. I love any dress or pattern that's dark colors, but floral. I love it so much, oh my gosh. So we're gonna do that. That's gonna be our thrifty project for the week. But what we're going to get into today, I would like to make a wreath out of things that are foraged, but using a wreath that I already have that was fake, that I don't love. I'm just gonna kinda do a little upcycly quick thing here for myself so that I can get the wreath up and I want to use what I have. So obviously you guys can use whatever you've got or go to the dollar store. They have the wreath making like stuff there. You just buy the whole circle and then you can put moss on it and bind it and just do what, however, get creative. But there's a lot of wreath making supplies at the dollar store. So we've got pie, we've got wreaths and we've got an upcycle coming and we've got a bandaid on our finger. <laughs> oh, and if anybody was wondering, I'm wearing a very old liquid lipstick from Too Faced called Cinnamon Buns. You can tell that it's an overcast day out because of how dark it is up here right now but we've got a rainy day. It's the perfect day for baking. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I am finally wearing the pinafore and I've thrown it on backwards. The pockets really do work both ways. So I think it's meant to be worn both ways. And this dress underneath was an upcycle I did a couple of years back. Still one of my ongoing favorite dresses to wear with different things and layers. And it looks amazing with a tall black boot. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's the cutest dress. And it has a little bit of a lift to the corners here where it used to have shoulder pads, which I don't mind. Um, yeah, so two thrifted dresses. Also today's fragrance, if you're wondering, is the Cabin Retreat by Memoir. I smell like a little cabin in the woods right now, everybody. So we're gonna head downstairs and make some pit. I can't say it without saying it like that. Okay guys, let's go. 
I love that they know that command. Here is the wreath I was talking about that I would like to spray paint. Look at this. My neighbor has turned into a canning pro and she has given me so many of her canned goods. And one of those things happens to be pie filling. Look, she said it's all ready to go. It's got everything you need in it. You just dump it in with the crust and you you're you're done so that's super easy for me to just start a little pie crust and now i've got pie filling and i've got another one too if i want to do a raspberry pie look at how good that looks mm. oh it's rainy out there flour and booter okay so it says to add a one and a half cups of flour let's get this nice and here. This is stuff that our mothers learned, our grandmothers learned. They all know how to make pie. But there's our salt and then sugar we need a tablespoon. And stir two to three times to combine. One cup of very cold unsalted butter cut into cubes. So that's this. All right now we're adding the final cup of flour four tablespoons of the ice water, press the dough into itself. This goes in the refrigerator for an hour. Alexa, set the timer for one hour. One hour, starting now. All right, well, while that is in the refrigerator, I'm gonna go spray paint my wreath and see what colors we've got. Gosh, what horrible weather. You know I love it. <laughs> the garage is back, baby. Our electricity wasn't working out here because the panel was being replaced with a new panel. Then it had to be approved by the city. Long story short, I have not had my little gym. I got this treadmill for free on OfferUp. So if you have the space for a treadmill and it folds up so it stays really thin, buckle it closed and it's really, really small. So it, it folds down quite a bit. Even if you don't have the space for a home gym little scenario, you can still find treadmills for free or for really cheap on OfferUp or Craigslist or wherever. And uh, everything's organized. We have paint. What paint do we have? Rust-Oleum Dark Walnut. I like that idea. It's almost black. All right, I've got it dangling here. Looking spooky, which I like. It's just so special. I gotta make sure I give her her jars back because, you know, once you start canning, jars are a hot commodity. Susan, if you were watching this, thank you for this amazing looking pie filling. That is a thing of beauty. The little things end right now. My grandmother is texting me. I sent her some photos of us from the fair. Well, look at that glorious little beauty. I still have to pinch the corners and egg wash the top, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited that I did this. Look at this puppy. So it's supposed to spill out the sides. It actually made me put a catch pan in the oven. It has to rest for four hours. Good morning. We're having a complete opposite day from yesterday. It is 
sunny and warm and beautiful. What we're doing this week is really simple. A lot of our favorite clothing items start to fade or become a color that we don't necessarily like. Then we just throw it in a Goodwill pile. We can give it a little refresh, especially for black. Black, one of the things that fades the most for me because I wear it the most. Why am I just getting rid of things because they're faded? So what we can be doing to our clothing to give it a refresh is just giving it a dye. Now what we're going to be doing is kind of similar to that. We're taking a dress that is cottage core and we're gonna make it dark cottage core. I use this as my pattern for whenever I'm cutting and upcycling a dress to a length that I like because this is my favorite dress length. The problem is, is I've never actually worn it because this isn't my style and this is what I've been thinking about. Why isn't it my style? It's my kind of dress, it has florals, it's a great shape, it's a great length. What would happen if we dyed this graphite, which I don't have black, I have graphite. And I just wanna use this because I already have it and I'm really trying to just like reuse things that I've got already which I got at the craft store. And we're gonna give this a, a, a darker vibe. So because of color theory, if you know anything about just the color wheel and what happens to things when you dye them, it's the same as combining on the color wheel two colors to create a different color. Even if it went a dark brown, I would be okay with that. I just don't want it to be this. This is not my color. All right, I added the soap. It was a teaspoon of soap and I don't want it to boil, so I'm actually gonna turn it back down and we're gonna add our dye. So let's give it a shake. What I would guess. It doesn't say on the bottle actually, but I'm gonna guess like a quarter of a cup. Okay, so it says that I can actually leave the dye over like a, an extended period of time. Arrived. I scoped out the roadways on the way here and I didn't see anything for foraging and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I didn't realize how hard foraging is when you live in the suburbs. like ink in here. I think letting it sit for over an hour while I was away has definitely worked. I think it's time to rinse it. I went looking for stuff to forage and to be honest, everything's so still recovering from summer dryness that everything's just still dry and dead looking. And I started thinking, I have stuff in my yard. I love that the flowers are dark. Like that was what I think bugged me the most about it. I didn't really mind the navy as much. I just didn't like the color of the flowers. It was like a powdery pink color that I just, I don't know, something about it's just not my cup of tea. All right, we've got a load of dark towels. We're just gonna toss in with it. Okay, so here's what I found. I've got some blackberry bramble with the thorns. And the thorns, anything with thorns, so rose bushes, blackberries, uh, raspberries, those types of things are really good to put in your wreath if you're into the concept of using your wreath as a way to protect your home. Wreaths go way back in time as protectants for the seasons. So I'm just, just learning as we go. These are probably poisonous, so I just wanna be careful with them. I'm considering if I even wanna use them. And then I found a couple of really cool, I love this color of just like a random bush that's out front. it looks lovely. I mean, and I don't even mind that it's just full of weeds and bushes. <laughs> yeah, I got the thorns all woven through it so they kind of peek out, which I think is cool. I love the black sunflowers. I think that's a neat look. 
and yeah, overall I think it came out pretty good. It says, Bitter Dock is more than just a plant, it's a companion in the garden. Its persistence and hardiness can mirror your own life challenges, offering a green reflection of personal growth. It's just not about the physical act of gardening, but the emotional and spiritual journey. Cultivating Bitter, bitter Dock can become a meditative practice, a way to connect with nature and one's self. That's what it said about Bitter Dock. So I just love that. I love like having, yeah, just more than just wrapping a wreath, but actually having like some intention with it. Good morning. <laughs> what did I get myself into? Taking a fabric pen to every individual flower was crazy talk, but I did it. It took me all night. I did it while I watched Bachelor Australia season two. I penciled in, I penned in every little pink flower. Spoiler. It's like a wilted flower now. It's like brownish on the outside and has, I left the pink inside on the interior. So it looks a little bit like multi-dimensional color. I really like the look of it. I think it looks really good. Uh, so it didn't dye it gray or black. It just really deepened the blue, which I actually like. All right. Um, I, I don't want a lot of fallout, so we're just going to prep the under eye real quick with a little translucent powder. We got an old Morphe palette I haven't used in forever, the 35K, but this is a really good autumn kind of dark tones, browns, oh yes. So I'm going to go in with some of these deeper browns. So let's get you closer. We're going to go into, this brush is too big for this. Do I have a clean? Paper. Yeah. I have not used a Morphe palette in a hot minute, so I forgot if they work well or not. They really had a moment. I remember Morphe before Morphe was like blowing up in the YouTube realm before, you know, all of the influencers came about and really marketed Morphe hardcore. I was at IMATS in, Ca in Canada. IMATS is the International Makeup Art Trade Show. And I remember seeing Morphe and I've never heard of it before. And I was talking to the owner and they were like, yeah, we're a, a California, like LA based brand. I think it was LA. Fast forward years, you know, after the whole YouTube influencer, beauty influencer thing happened and that really blew up. It was just such a wild time, you know? What I do like about these uh, Give Beauty Gwen Stefani's line, I love these gels. Their, their liners are really nice. They, they just blend really pretty. They're soft. They're long lasting because once they set, they're really good. I just like, I really like them. And we're just lightly blending it into the lash line. So it's not going to like come all the way across the skin. It's just kind of blending into the lash. I need to get some color on my face stat because we do want to go with that rosy romantic look as well. I just wanted to share this because Freck is really expensive for this little tiny jar. And I found Freckle Pens for under 10 bucks and they work just the same. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you because this is the same thing, but for like a quarter of the price. Handy, handy, hey, hey, can't say it but I'll link it. All right, I've already contoured one side because I wanted to do a little bit for uh, the reel that I'm putting together of this exact same concept for the mini promotion. This is my life. I film things twice now. Let's do this. So we're gonna go in with the middle one. Have I told you I love this blush though? Have I told you that? Because <laughs> I think I have. All over that cheek. Get it all over that cheek. Ooh. All right, now we're gonna go in with the Anastasia Bubbly Cream highlighter. See, it was just this like really nice candlelight gold. I just feel like it looks like I'm in candlelight. Um, lips, I don't know what I want to do. I want it to match my dress. I need a rose. Oh, I think I have one. I do. I think I have a rose. Dead roses. Get 
out of here. That's exactly what I wanted. How old is this? I actually have no idea. I don't know if they still carry this, so I apologize. I'll find a dupe and make sure I list it. But we're going in with Dead Roses. That went on so much darker than I expected. Sometimes I just don't need liner. Sometimes I just... And then I'll go... <laughs> it just looks how it should look. That's a really pretty color and I don't know that I've ever worn this and I've had it for years. It doesn't smell like it's been in my makeup collection forever um, and it's absolutely beautiful. Dead Roses. I have to go Seattle, to Seattle two days in a row. Ugh, I love the work and I'm so grateful for it but I hate I-5 with a passion. So you put it in the bun. I didn't show you. <laughs> so you get your hair as like, you know, kind of tight as you want for your bun. And then you get one of these donuts, okay? And you just, and get it the color of your hair, obviously. And then you just take a little end and wrap it around that. And then you just twist and as you're twisting take your fingers and kind of start to spread your hair around the bun just kind of moving it around it and just keep twisting and then when you get to the base you've got to kind of start to manipulate and push and then you get a freaking really nice perfect bun on the top of your head and this, this hairspray is pretty good i got it at the dollar store and it's like whew, this is like old school hold <laughs> this takes me back very clean that looks so much better than how it looked that whole time that is how it's got a secret little bumper in it <laughs> secret little secret little bun donut here's the dress here's the finished dress now let me put the before here. Now, as you remember, all of these flowers were bright pink. So being able to turn this into something because the dress has so much potential to be a dress that I would absolutely love is really, really lovely. I, Cause I think this dress was really cheap. I think I got it for like a dollar or a couple of bucks, but I really love the color that the florals turned out. Yes, it took me forever. <laughs> yes, it was worth it. And this fabric pen, hopefully will stay because if it, I'm afraid to wash this if it even lightens up remotely I want it to remain this darker tone I have brown and black my soul calls to black all right these are the good ones I, I have to have like my leggings cannot feel tight they have to be really loose and really easy to put on. So I recommend sizing up in your leggings, even though it might recommend having smaller ones if you're like, I can't stand the feeling. If I was going with the brown leggings, this really nice deep chocolate would look lovely with that. I also thought this Tory Burch would look really pretty with it. It'd be pretty, but my heart says the black harness because that to me, is dark cottage core to a T. I always wear these over my leggings so that my leggings, see they're really cute. And then I brought ye old snakeskin black cowboy boots. And then I think what would be really adorable because this is dark cottage core, we need a bow. Oh yes, yeah, so we're just gonna slide it into place. It's on a little clip, like a cl claw clip. And then that can just drape alongside. <gasps> Guys, this is freaking adorable. All right, so I bought this collar and it's, it's a necklace. So what I'm gonna do is just temporarily for now, unless I decide I need it back, I'm gonna remove, remove this. So this is like a jewelry tool and I can take just that part off, but then I can have a collar because <gasps> it needed it. I was able to pin this on, popped on some black hoop earrings. And then for the purse, I haven't used this yet. And it's so tacky. It's a patent leather fruit 
basket, but the fruit is a cross stitching knit and it's just so amazing. This looks so much better. It's so much better. They look like dead flowers now instead of happy spring flowers. I just gave it a little edge. Good morning. This is the outfit part of the TV on. I'm leaving it on for the dogs. But this is the outfit of the day. I'm finally getting to wear this dress. It's cold enough. And yeah, we're gonna go do makeup. We're heading to a part of town called West Seattle. I would like to see if there's thrift stores over there. I don't even know. Does West Seattle have any vintage or thrift stores? Because I haven't gone thrifting this week. And it's not that I have to every week, but I kind of do because this is a thrifty YouTube channel. And even though we did something that was an upcycle, I feel weird if I don't like just pop into a thrift store. I don't even have to buy anything, just go to go, especially when I'm in a new part of town. So this will be a new adventure. This is a new part of town, West Seattle. It's the beachy town, the beachy part of Seattle. But this is my makeup today. I gave my bangs a little trim. Somebody requested a bang uh, trim tutorial. So at some point I need to just explain how I do this. Anyway, I'm gonna get going. This is Alki. Uh, I'm actually getting a little video of it now because I was sent the wrong address. Where I was going, I thought was gonna be literally on the water because of the address, but it looks like we're going up one street. This is the beach strip and there's tons of restaurants and bars. It's so cute. Like in another lifetime, I would have come here you know, before going downtown to Seattle and just like living this like beach life experience because it's just so cute. Like I love Alki, I love it. I don't want to get too distracted, but Alki is the cutest, isn't it? It's so Seattle, but it's also so Seattle beachy. <sighs> okay, I am all done. I didn't get any photo or video because there was a kid there and it's their house. So I usually just get kind of weirded out. But um, I did see that a straight shot down the way that I'm heading home, there is a thrift store. It's an American Cancer Society thrift store. I'm just gonna pop in. I have a raging headache and I'm really hungry. So I don't wanna take too long unless there's like a bakery nearby. That would be ideal if I can grab coffee and a little bite and then just zip around that thrift store. But I have to check it out. Cupcakes from Cup Cupcake Royale. <gasps> Look at how adorable with the strawberry. It's a fake strawberry. It's like a fondant glittery strawberry. And then I got red velvet for my husband because that's one of his favorites. Um, these look delicious. I know I made a pie earlier this week. I'm having a hard time tackling this thing, but I'm doing my best. There's still half left, but I'm ready for something new. <laughs> it's the only thing about a pie is if you don't have like a large family to help eat it, it's like, what are you gonna do? Eat an entire pie? Okay, so I went to, as you know, the American Cancer Society. Yeah, I got a little bit of footage. There's two mannequin heads that I asked if they were for sale because they were so like 80s and their makeup was so crazy. I just, I loved those mannequins for some reason. As soon as I thought I was just gonna get pillows, I saw the rack in the back that was 75% off everything on it. 
and that's when the storm started of like sienna tornado when she finds things that are on sale in clearance and then i'm like oh my god this has potential i could do cool stuff with it so i just i ended up getting a bag of stuff <sighs> you know how that is but look at these pillows oh look at these pillows <laughs> they're so cool i love round pillows and they're a woven really cool fabric they're just really neat and the couch up here um, really could use some extra pillows on it. I feel like I've been wanting pillows for it for a while now so we're gonna put these on that and um, I'm gonna probably clean them. I'm gonna figure out the best way to clean them without ruining them. This one is actually crochet and then this one is a different type of material. It's a it's a little bit a little bit different. Everything else was part of the 75% off. I brought my own bag. Why can't I say no to vintage? Why? If it's vintage and it's on sale, I'm getting it, whether I need it or not. And this is why I think I have hoarder tendencies. Even though I have no problem getting rid of stuff, so I know that because I can part with things that I'm not in trouble, but the fact that I can't resist buying it is what scares me. Like, can I not? I put it back on the rack, took it off, put it back, took it off. Cause I was like, oh, I'm going to regret it if I don't. And then I thought, well, it's only $3 and this is how it happens. But look at this. <laughs> look at it. It's a Mrs. Roper oversized. Well, not oversized. It's actually going to be kind of fitted cause I think it's a small, it's 12. Okay, so it's not. It was in the small, so that's why I thought that, because it was hanging in the small rack. But it's a size 12, so it's a large. But look at this. Amazing. The colors remind me of Care Bear. It gives me feels, and that's like, how, how could I have not gotten this, you know? It's polyester. It's essentially just going to make me sweat my absolute ass off but I could not resist. Look at the sleeves. It's just the most amazing vintage robe. Pockets, shower, toss this puppy on, lounge around in it, have my morning coffee. I need some fun fuzzy slippers to wear with this thing. It's just so badass. So this is a Vanity Fair old ass hilarious robe. It's a Mrs. Roper. I love it so much. I can't believe I even thought about putting it back. <laughs> but I'm just really trying, you guys. I'm really trying on not like hoarding things. Just a really nice vintage kind of like white and blue pinstripe but i really liked the shape look at how it cinches can you see that the stitching it like cuts in i feel like that'll be a really flattering shape i had to get it three bucks couldn't help myself <laughs> and then this was 13 and it was also on sale i only got these because i don't have any gray fitted stretch pants. These are just capri style. Uh, they look like they'll probably be high-waisted and they're really thick banded, but I just could tell by looking at it that these will fit me really nice. And they were 13, but 75% off. So these were also $3. Everything I got was under 23 bucks. All right, well, that is it, you guys. That is everything this week. I'm gonna go wash my uh, robe onesie and probably steam these to get them clean and thanks so much for watching this video this week i hope you enjoyed my little upcycle and my pie baking and my little trip to west seattle i hope you enjoyed if you did please give me a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching i'll see you on next week's video bye